ان الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور انفسنا ومن سيئات اعمالنا ما يهده الله فلا مضل له وما يضلل فلا هادي له واشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له واشهد ان محمدا عبده ورسوله يا ايها الذين امنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن الا وانتم مسلمون يا ايها الناس اتقوا ربكم الذي خلقكم من نفس واحده وخلق منها زوجها وبث منهما رجالا كثيرا ونساء واتقوا الذي تساءلون به والارham ان الله كان عليكم رقيبا يا ايها الذين امنوا اتقوا الله وقولوا قولا سديدا يصلح لكم اعمالكم ويغفر لكم ذنوبكم ومن يطع الله ورسوله فقد فاز فوزا عظيما اما بعد فان استق الحديث كتاب الله وخير الهدى هدى محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم وشر الامور محدثاتها وكل محدثه بدعه وكل بدعه ضلاله وكل ضلاله في النار فالي يا اخوان يا اخوات all the praise and all of the glory it goes to allah and allah alone and i publicly i inwardly and i outwardly declare and attest to the fact that there is no deity that deserves to be worshiped except for rabbul izza allahu jalla jalaluhu and i bear witness ya ikhwan and i bear witness ya ikhwan that you're not a believer in allah in the last day unless you bring the lip service the love in your heart and the actions that follow the sunnah of al amin mustafa alayhi wasalatu taslim better known as ya ikhwan abu qasim sallallahu alayhi wasallam and inshallah ta'ala ya ikhwan we are going to inshallah ta'ala we're going to talk about a topic that as a new muslim one of the imams from the past he told me that salvation ya ikhwan it revolves into being a muwahid a person who singles out allah in his worship and a person who tenaciously bites on to the sunnah of al amin abu qasim sallallahu alaihi wasallam ya ikhwan many of us we claim that we're sunni but do we know the sunnah many of us we claim that we're sunni but do we know the books of the sunnah many of us we claim that we're sunni ya ikhwan do we practice the sunnah of Mustafa sallallahu alaihi wasallam many of us we claim it was sunni but do we love what Allah and his messenger love are we from the people who just lip profess i am a muslim i practice islam in ramadan mashihan walhamdulillah when we look at the ummah ya ikhwan the empty hand the empty lap and the fitna and the fasad One of the great scholars he said it's because we don't follow the sunnah of Mustafa sallallahu alaihi wasallam ya ikhwan and this is a call today inshallah ta'ala to the people of the sunnah ahli sunnah where are you all people who say they love Mustafa sallallahu alaihi wasallam all people who proclaim that that is the messenger of Allah we're calling to your hearts today be in the light ta'ala And ya ikhwan as you know Allah Ta'ala he has given us many ayat ya ikhwan inshallah Ta'ala we're not going to bring too many because sometimes when you give the muslims too much on their plate they can't digest it ya ikhwan or if the medicine comes to them too pure they complain and say this is just too much because we have become lackadaisical muslims ya ikhwan we have become mechanized muslims 1231 let's pray the salat ya ikhwan 12:45 and let's call the adhan ya ikhwan 
At this time we have to do this, yeah, Ikhwan, these are important matters, but what is important is for us to learn the religion of, of Mustafa sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he said, لَكَدْ كَانَ لَكُمْ فِي رَسُولُ اللَّهِ أُسْوَةٍ حَسَنًا Indeed, in the message of Mustafa sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, we have the finest example yet, yeah, Ikhwan. Also, وَخَيْرٍ huda, huda Muhammadin sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. All these things, yeah, Ikhwan, they're not new to us as an ummah. But have we sat and thought about the meaning, the ma'na, ya yeah, Ikhwan? Or are we just taking this Qur'an as just something that you hear in Ramadan? MashaAllah, beautiful tilawa. MashaAllah, beautiful, MashaAllah. It is so jameel, MashaAllah, barakallah. Ikhwan, the Qur'an was revealed, some scholars say, for the i'tiqad, the belief, and the ahkam, putting it into application. So we find that, Ikhwan, that this issue that we want to talk about is the issue of at-tawheed al mutabi'ah And this word tawheed coming from Yuahiduna, or a person who singles out Allah, but here we're singling out the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. There is no one yet, Ikhwan, that we should single out other than Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. He is the one we emulate and we imitate and we follow. There is no man's words, my dear brothers. I did not leave Christianity to come into Islam to listen to the kalam of anyone other than Allah and His Messenger. <laughs> So we find Ya Ikhwan, Allah Ta'ala went on to say, in this ayah, Ya Ikhwan, Wallahi, if we were to just give this one ayah, it should be enough, we should be able to pray and leave, but we're going to give you more ayah, just to solidify this understanding. So when somebody nowadays, as we're living in the last days, Ya Ikhwan, many people are saying, we have a shortcut to the Jannah. Just follow the Sheikh, just follow this madhab, just follow the school of thought, just follow this institution, and you'll go to the Jannah. Well, let's see what Allah and His Messenger said. Call Allah Ta'ala, Allah says, Kul in kuntum Allah. فَاتَّبِعُونِي يُحْبِبُكُمُ اللَّهِ وَيَكْفُرْ لَكُمْ ذَنُوبَكُمْ وَاللَّهُ غَفُرُ الرَّحِيمُ قُلْ أَتِيْءَ اللَّهَ وَرَسُولُ وَرَسُولَ فَإِنْ تَوَلَّوْا فَإِنَّ اللَّهَ لَا يُحِبُّ الْكَافِرِينَ Allah Ta'ala he says, Say, O Muhammad to mankind, if you really love Allah Azza wa Jal, then follow Muhammad, meaning follow me, Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam. If you do that, then Allah will also love you, and Allah He will forgive you of all of your sins, or forgive you of your sins. And then Allah Taala goes on to say that He is the all forgiving and the most merciful. Then Allah hits us with another ayah to show us yet, Ikhwan, that they're attached. Allah says, but if they turn away from the sunnah, if they turn away from at tawheed then Allah does not like those who disbelieve, ya ikhwan. So you can't say, oh, I don't want to be a muwahid. I want to worship some other gods other than Allah. And there's Muslims who do that, that claim to be Muslim, that they do that. They worship other than Allah. I've seen them when I was in Egypt, calling on Sayyid Badawi, calling on Maghrawi, calling on Hussein, calling on Fatima. I've seen it with my own eyes as a new Muslim, leaving the lands of shirk, going to the lands of so-called Tawheed in the city of Tanta. i seen people with beards longer than me, Turbans big to the sky, I seen them making sujood, ya ikhwan, to the cemetery of a so-called saint, ya ikhwan. Why would I leave Christianity to come into Islam if this is what Islam is? But it's not, ya ikhwan. So the Shaykh goes on to say that singling out the Messenger of Sallallahu this Tawheed is referred to as a Tawheed al itiba or Tawheed al mutabi because emulation is only for one man. Muhammad Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. It's attached to la ilaha illallah, Muhammad Rasulullah. Understand that, ya ikhwan, that the call is to the book of Allah and the sunnah of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And if you really love the legislation of Allah azza wa jal, then you understand that there was a sender, Allah azza wa jal, and the sent was Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. There was a sender, Allah, who sent the wahi to Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. There is no scholar. We respect and we, 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 we love the scholars, but the scholars are nothing to the steps of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And many of them have said, فَإِذَا السَّحْرُ الْحَدِيثِ فَهُوَ مَذْحَبِي If you find an authentic hadith, then that's my school of thought. But unfortunately, ya ikhwan, there are so many Muslims, ya ikhwan, that they won't marry their daughter to another man because he's on another madhab but they're Muslim. I scratch my head and I wonder, and I look, what religion are we practicing? 
Also, Allah Ta'ala went on to say, Ya Ikhwan, as another ayah, when we look critically step by step, and as you attach it, you look and you see that there is no option except for to follow the sunnah of Rasulullah Qala Allah Ta'ala, wa ma atakum ar-rasul fakhuduhu, wa ma nahakum anhu fantahu, wa taqwa Allah. And here comes the clause, Ya Ikhwan. Inna Allah shadeed al-iqab. Yes, we worship Ar-Rahman Ar-Rahim, but no, on the other side is Allah is shadeed al-iqab, ya ikhwan. It's a balance. And whatever the messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he gives you, this is an order from Allah. Then you should take it. And whatever he tells you to stay away from, ya ikhwan, then stay away from it. And if you don't do that, then Allah, he's severe in punishment. And I went to a masjid, ya ikhwan, where there's some nice brothers, they seem nice, their hearts are really nice. And they claim that they have a great scholarship that goes back to their country. And as a new Muslim, I'm extremely critical. Before I accept Islam, I read books and books and books, and I studied a multiplicity of religions. So when I erased Islam, it wasn't by fluke, Yahwan. I used every inkling that Allah Azza gave me in my small intellect, and I took over the library for days, and I looked into Islam in detail. So now when I come into Islam, am I not going to be that same person? When the issue comes up, I'm going to make bahith. I'm going to go and do some research, Ya Ikhwan. I'm not just going to sit on the line and say, Alhamdulillah, I'm Muslim. No, Ya Ikhwan, I want to be in the game, Ya Ikhwan, as they say. I don't want to be a spectator in Islam, Ya Ikhwan. I want to be one of the forefront people that are spreading Islam in the land. This is something we should all aspire to. As this is from the forgotten sunnah of the Messenger of Allah, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. So we find, Ya Ikhwan, that these brothers, there's a particular sunnah of the Prophet, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And it's called establishing. And there's many of them, but I'm just going to give you this one. And I want you brothers not to take my word for it. Get up off your assets and go and look for yourself, Ya Ikhwan. There's a, many, 13 hadith, I believe, if my memory is correctly, in Sahih Muslim. Where, as we know, as I said to the brothers, because they were practicing a particular sunnah of the Prophet, which is called establishing the sutra for the salat. And the brothers said, well, it's not from my mother. So I grabbed Sahih Bukhari off the bookshelf in their masjid. They have Sahih Bukhari, which is the most authentic book after the Book of Allah. And I came to the brothers and I put the book behind my back. And I said, MashaAllah brothers, I'm a new Muslim. I've been Muslim now for about 24 years, but I didn't come through any so-called great Islamic heritage. But I have a couple of questions I want to ask you. After the Book of Allah, which is the next best book? They all said, Bukhari, three months. I said, oh, MashaAllah, very good. So I opened up the page and I looked at all the hadith and I started, I started showing them. And I said, why don't we establish the, the sutra in this particular masjid? The brother said, well, that's not from my brother. Well, that's not from our Mazhab, brother. I said, brother, Imam Bukhari collected 13 hadith in his book. And Imam Muslim has some hadith, and Imam Abu Dawood has some hadith, and Imam Sa'i, and many other Imams, they collected many hadith. And each one of them is a different chain of narration in their books. <laughs> oh, no, no, brother, but you see this? I said, brother, look, the word here says, Amara Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, because I can read Arabic now. And unfortunately, yeah, well, there's some brothers, there's one brother who knows me for a long time, but there's people who think, that when they look at me as I'm now 44 years old, that I'm that same Muslim who embraced Islam when I was 19, and I don't know anything. Yeah, Ikhwan, we've been putting in time, Yeah, Ikhwan, trying to learn as much as we can with the limited resources that we had. I had two scholarships I wasn't able to go overseas and study, but I went overseas for a little bit and I came back over, and I'm enrolled in every possible class that I can take, Yeah, Ikhwan, because I'm hungry to learn the sunnah of Mustafa sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And this is something we should all aspire to, my dear brothers. So yeah, well, and I went to the brothers and I showed them the hadith and they said, well, that's not from my brother. brother. So subhanAllah, the madhab is more important than the sunnah? The madhab is more important than the sunnah? Somebody's statement or misunderstanding and maybe that imam, he never knew of these hadith, there's a possibility. Oh no, not our shaykh, our shaykh knows everything. No, yeah, Ikhwan, there's only one who knows all. And that is Al-Alim, Al-Hakim. Allah Azza wa Jal, He has all the knowledge. All of us, Yahweh, no matter how great of a scholar you are, Yahweh, in comparison to Rasulullah, so we're ignorant, Yahweh. And we have to be humble and keep learning this religion. And we call it Hadha. Alhamdulillahi wahda wa salatu wa salam ala man nabiya na ba'ra. Ya ikhwan, ya ikhwan, again continuation. Just so it's clear for you brothers, I'm only bringing three ayat. Allah, this book that I was reading from, it has so much delil that if anybody reads it with the critical eye, you'll see, ya ikhwan, there's no choice. 
And this is why the Prophet ﷺ was teaching the Ummah and Allah Azza wa Jal commanded them, Sami'na wa ata'ana, Sami'na wa ata'ana, Sami'na wa ata'ana, ya ikhwan. Down in the United States of America, the country below us, they have in their army, and as you see it on many movies, and as you know, when the general gives a command, the soldiers don't say, well, you know what, I don't like what the general say. I don't like what he say. I don't like the other general. I like what this guy say. I'm not going to listen to him. They don't do that, yeah. They say, yes, sir! Yes, sir! And they implement and they implement, yeah, well. And this was the nature of the companions with Wallahi alayhi majma'een. When the Prophet gave them a command, yeah, ikhwan, they said, Sama'na wa ata'ana. We hear and we obey. But now, yeah, ikhwan, we live in a time where the Muslim's heart, the Muslim's heart, it seems as though that they're bored with Islam or something like that, yeah, ikhwan. Muslims are going to the movies, Muslims are hanging out in the clubs, Muslims are spending day and night on the internet, yeah, well, but how much time are we spending learning the book of, of Allah and the sunnah of the messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam? The last ayah we bring, yeah, well, is the ayah of Allah ta'ala wa to say, وَمَا يُشَاقِكَ الرَّسُولُ مِنْ بَعْدِ مَا تَبَيَّنَ لَهُ الْهُدَى وَيَتَّبِعْ غَيْرِ السَّبِيلِ الْمُؤْمِنِينَ نُوَلِّهِ مَا تَوَلَّى وَنُسْلِهِ جَهَنَّمْ وَسَاعَتْ وَسِيرًا Yeah, well. First, the punishment of Allah, then you're a kafir if you leave the sunnah. And now Allah is going to say, and whoever contradicts and he opposes the Messenger وسلم, after the path has been clearly shown to him, المستقيم, the Surat al Mustaqim, it's been clearly shown to him, and he follows other than the way of the believers, meaning the Sahaba and those who firmly believe in it. Allah Ta'ala says, we will keep him in the path that he has chosen, the path of Dalala, and burn him in the hellfire. And what an evil destination. These ayahs, my brothers, when the Sahaba heard it, they started to cry, they started to ponder, their hair started to go gray. It had an impact upon their life. These were ayah from Allah Azza and it had an impact on their life, ya ikhwan, in this book of Allah. And the sunnah of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, that if someone tried to poison, or fight, or kill, or harm the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, they would jump in the way, take one for the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, take a punch, take a stab. They love the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam more than any man. My dear brothers, we're claiming that we're Muslim, but do we follow Islam? لَقَدْ كَانَ لَكُمْ رَسُولُ وَقَدْ لَقَدْ كَانَ لَكُمْ فِي رَسُولُ اللَّهِ أُسْوَةً حَسَنًا Indeed, in the Messenger of Islam, you have the finest guidance. And one of the great scholars of the past, he said, اِتَّبِعُوا وَلَا تَبْتَدِعُوا فَقَدْ كُفِيتُوا He said, follow, follow. You do not invent, for verily you have been given enough. And I have met Muslims that said, and I met them, and some of them have PhDs from non-Muslim universities. Well, the Sharia is a little bit old. I think we need to change it and modify it for contemporary times. It's a statement of disbelief, Ya Ikhwan. The Sharia is perfect. Islam is perfect. Tawheed is perfect. The Sunnah is perfect. The problem is, Ya Ikhwan, there's something wrong with our intellect. There's something wrong with our heart. There's something wrong with our nafs, Ya Ikhwan, that when we have the book and the sunnah, we're not happy with that, we're looking for something else, Ya Ikhwan. My dear brothers, my dear sisters, I'm no better than any of you, but I will tell you this sincerely, that if we don't follow the book and the sunnah of the Prophet Sallam, as we've been seeing in our time with the technology that we have, even though this has been happening for hundreds and hundreds of years, the Muslims are going to continue to get many punishments. The Muslims are going to continue to get many adab. The Muslims are going to get annihilated and decimated because we left the sunnah of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. With that, hadha ma'indi wa sallallahu wa sallam ala nabiyyina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa ashabihi ajma'een. Ponder, my dear brothers. Ponder, my dear sisters. How many books of the sunnah of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam do you have in your house? Do you have the seerah of the Prophet ﷺ in your house? Do you read about the Prophet ﷺ to your family, to your wives and to your children? Or is this Islam just something you do once or twice a week and once a year in Ramadan and that's it? If that's the case, Allah Musta'an, may Allah guide us to be better Muslims. Barakallahu